Good morning, and thank you so much for stopping by and coming along with me today on my uh, little needlework quest. This is um, a Make It Monday idea, and uh, my granddaughter is getting married a couple of months, and um, her and I share pretty much the same favorite colors. Um, and I decided that for a wedding gift, I'm going to make her a Christmas tree skirt. And we're, we're, it's going to feature some machine embroidery and some machine applique. And when I'm finished, let me see if I can find the picture I want to show you. When I'm finished, <laughs> This is someone else's, which I stole their idea. Um, the Christmas tree skirt will look like this, and I'm gonna put some big wooden buttons on here and loops to close the skirt, make it look sort of country-ish. They, they will have a small apartment, so uh, not, not a huge amount of room. So this isn't going to be terribly big for a Christmas tree skirt, but this is half of it right here. Um, this is the pattern. So if you want to, you can go to Shabby Fabrics and purchase this pattern. I'm doing mine a little differently. You can see here, there are more triangles at the bottom of these big triangles. They like cut across here and across here and I just left those out. I just wanted that to be one solid piece so I could embroider on it. And uh, when you start a project like this, you're gonna wanna take some notes. So you can see here, this is the pattern outside the package and you can see all my notes on here um, of how I went about cutting out the reindeer so that I didn't have to do all that trimming. If you have ever done, oh, by the way, this fabric came from Shabby Fabrics too. It's called Christmas at Buttermilk Acres, Timber Nomi's Tree Farm, Belle Isle. And then there's the skirt pattern on my packing slip. So there's where to get the fabric and there's what it's called. So, Let's see here. When you do, see I did one in black. This was my first one that I did. So I always do like a sample. And I've also printed off my reindeer pattern to size from my software. And this little reindeer pattern is from Tattered Stitches. And it comes in three sizes and it seems to me it's three dollars and if you want to in your software you can take the reindeer out and you'll just have this bow or you can take the bow out and just have the reindeer it's like multi-functional piece of uh, digital embroidery file but you can see that I've just put on all kinds of notes on here too Keeping notes is a very good idea because if you want to do this again, you come back next year, you'll never, if you're like me, be able to remember how you did this. And so, so I started to tell you that typically when you do an in the hoop project like this or a machine embroidery project like this, uh, the machine will stitch out a die line or a placement line for the applique and then you would put a square of fabric on here that's about the right size to cover those that die line and then stitch it again and then you have to come in with your little scissors and trim and i did not want to trim all these little places so i made just this reindeer into an svg file in software and I used my scan and cut and I cut out all my reindeer on my scan and cut. So here's all my reindeer and uh, 
This way I didn't have to spend any time cutting at all. And this fits exactly inside the die line once it's stitched off onto my uh, triangle of light colored cream fabric. And I used heat and bond light on the back so that I can press it in place and it won't move, especially these little antlers and his tail are kind of notorious for wanting to wiggle. So um, in my plan, I want, I'm gonna turn this this way, so it's upside down kind of, but I want to put their family name here. They're just getting married and their last name is Stufflebeam. So I'm going to put the Stufflebeams right here. So I'm only going to need six reindeer. And um, the way I'm gonna do this is, I am not gonna cut my corner or the opening down the back until after I have this all quilted. So it's gonna look like sort of a table topper because this is all going to be in there. You see my center is all going to be one piece. But I'm gonna do some edge to edge quilting on this. And then I will cut the circle and then all I have to do is bind the entire thing all the way around and it's finished. I'll put a label on the back and um, that's what I'm up to. So today for our Make It Monday, we're gonna do one of the reindeer and I figured out just by measuring and doing a little math, I figured out what size square to cut to get two triangles and I have sprayed this really well, got it pretty wet with Terial Magic and let it rest a little while. And then I pressed it and you can see it's, it's, it's like paper. It's really stiff and especially this edge because this edge is biased. So we don't want to stretch any bias. And I have a little mark here I folded this in half to find the center. And when I printed my pattern off, my embroidery file off to size, I put it on here and I just put it, you know, where I wanted it. And I kind of centered it up and looked things over, put it on, and I put a pin through here and centered it. And uh, this one was my, like I said, my first stitch out. And I know that the beginning stitches are right here. So, after I did this one, all I did was make a mark. I put a pin through where the very first stitch will start. And all my reindeer are in the exact same place on every triangle. And when I hoop this up, I do not have a midi hoop. I don't have a maxi hoop, but I have a mega hoop. So this is my Bernina mega hoop for my, my 770. And my reindeer, I have to reduce it to 97%, line this up and center it, find my little spot where my first stitch begins and I'm off and running. So here's how I'm going to hoop and what I'm going to hoop. So I've, I've pressed my fabric with Terial Magic, got it good and, good and starched. And this is a medium weight tearaway. This is sticky back tear away, which I'm going to kind of position in the center of my, my first piece of stabilizer. And this is kind of a tip. I don't know how many people really believe this, but I do. And I had a Bernina expert tell me this. Um, and since I discovered it, I have never had any problem at all with my in the hoop embroidery 
or any embroidery file. Always use two layers of stabilizer. It doesn't matter, really, if you hoop this one and float this one underneath here. This is called floating when it's not in the hoop. Sometimes we float things on top. Sometimes we float things on the bottom. Sometimes we have three layers of, of stabilizer. We might have, if we're doing a towel, we might have a layer of water soluble on top here of the towel. So we would have three layers then. But always use two layers of stabilizer. And I'm going to hoop these together. So there's two ways. You could hoop this, float that. You can hoop these two together. Or you could, um, you could, hoop this and float this, but it's much better to have this a little tighter. So there's a lot of different ways to use and, uh, you know, control your stabilizers. So I'm just going to put this in here and kind of hold it in the middle. And this, this just needs to be you know, I'm just eyeballing it for the center because my reindeer will fit on here just fine. And so I'm just gonna, and you always want the paper, the slick paper side up when you're using sticky back. And I don't know if I have this, if I have this, let's see. I have my bottom hoop open enough, and plus I have a camera in front of me, so I might not be able to pull this off, but I'll try. There we go. Okay, so there's how I'm going to hoop mine. And this little screwdriver, which I've shown you many times, this came with my, what was it, 57D foot, and it's got this little open squishy thingy and I use it to, to tighten the screws on my hoop. And you can buy a, what's it called, a hoop key do Does the same thing, pretty much. It's probably, I don't know, it might be a little easier on your hands if you have arthritis or something. But this works just perfect for me. And I do have, RA, pretty bad, and, and my fingers are not as strong as probably I wish they were, but oh well, it is what it is. Okay, now I'm going to burp my hoop. If you're new to machine embroidery, you always want to burp your hoop, and you see with my thumbs, I'm pushing the hoop down just a little bit, the inner hoop inside the outer hoop and making a little, little lip along here. Just pushing it, and it'll be much quieter. It will embroider a lot easier because it's sliding on your machine table, top bed of your machine. And so now I am all hooped up and just about ready to put my fabric in my hoop. And once we get that done, We'll go to the machine and we'll start and do a little embroidery. All right, I have to take this top layer of protective paper off to expose the sticky that's underneath here. So I'm just using my stylus and I'm scoring, I'm just scoring this paper. And I'm get under here and lift it up and tear it off. And then it exposes the sticky part. So we get all this off of here. Off of both sides. Sometimes if I'm hooping something big and I have to wrestle with it a little bit, I do position it here and I, I take this off 
one half at a time. Kind of helps me wrangle things a little better. And I always try to pull upwards. I don't know why. I think it works better, to tell you the truth. Okay. So now, all I have to do, you see my press down the center here. I know I want about an inch here on the bottom. So I'm gonna put my little, see how my, my press line lines up with the center here? And I want the same thing to happen down here. That looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna very lightly, I'm not gonna, you know, just push down on this really, really hard. I don't wanna do that. So there's my center point. Now let me see. Let's see where we're at and make sure that my I'm in the right spot and that my embroidery is going to fit just fine. I think it will. So when you're looking at an embroidery hoop, it looks like you have all this room, but there's actually what we call an embroidery field. And it's actually in a little ways from the outside of the inner hoop here. And that accommodates for that little lip that's on your presser foot, your embroidery foot. Because if we could go all the way up to the edge, the foot would hit it because there's like an eighth or a little more inch circle of the foot around the needle on your 26 foot. And I always use the 15 foot, but it's the same deal. You, you're never going to be able to embroider right up against the hoop. So down here, I've got a little more room here and down here, not so much. So I think I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit. I'm just gonna hold that on there and just tack it with my thumbs and move that out of the way so I can see my center. And it's still right on on target. This one needs to come back over just a little. Just coax it over. And now I think I'm in a little better shape than I was before. And how easy was that? I mean, you know, how easy was that? <laughs> oh, well, that was really easy, Beth. <laughs> I'm so glad you showed me that. Now look how much room we have here. Lots of room. Okay, so now all I gotta do, I'm gonna put a pin right here because I know that's where my stitching starts. So I'm gonna put a pin there and then I'm gonna take a friction pin and put a little mark right here. And as long as I'm within shouting distance of that mark, I'm good. Alrighty, let me get over now to the machine. Oh, I love the way this looks and I love this fabric. So I'm gonna get over to the machine and we're gonna stitch out a reindeer. Okay, let's turn this baby on. Come on, darling. Come up where I can see you. You know, you can program your name if you want to, you can program your name into your opening screens. Mine will come on here, I think in a minute. It'll say, hello, Beth. And that little buzz that you hear, that's a systems check. It's perfectly normal, not a big deal. And I had black thread on yesterday the last thing so I've got to take that off and so you always pull your thread down and out the needle don't ever pull your thread backwards and I want you to notice let me see if I can turn you I'll have to lift you up I had to make my own because my gray ones wore out but I just took a piece of um, 
foam interfacing and cut a makeshift circle and stuck it onto my little little thing that goes on my machine there. You always want to have that foam pad on there. And if yours wear out, you can buy new ones. I was just, you know, I'm 80 miles from my dealer, so. And I didn't want to pay for shipping on something that would, I could make, just put together here at home. So you always want to have your foam pad on. And sometimes you will need a thread net. This goes over your spool of thread and it's stretchy and it keeps the thread from just unraveling too fast. Um, and I'll show you how to put your, your thread on to begin with. Uh, let me see, I'm raise you up a little bit. There we go. Hold on. <laughs> so I've got my thread on here, my spool, and this is thread art thread. It is a polyester embroidery thread, which I love. I love it a lot. And you use whatever thread you have. But did you see how I really made sure this is on there tight? And my spool is pushed against the foam pad. I don't want my spool to turn. I want the thread to reel off the spool. Let me see what's going on here. There we go. Reel off the spool just like that. And if it reels off too fast or too much, I'll put the thread net on. And so then when you're threading, you want to make sure you come down and up, over and to the right, to the right, down through the tension, up, over the take up lever and you kind of pull it a little bit to the left you want to make sure you're engaged in here and I have a hold of it up here keeping it a little bit taut I don't do that floss thing that people talk about I don't think that's a good idea but I do hold it taut so that I know that my thread has made its way into the tension discs so and I just bring it around put it behind use my needle threader Threader, needle threader goes behind, under this little hooky thingy right there. <laughs> My machine says, what are you doing? What do you want to do? It's going up and down. Then I go down and press the little wire through the needle, and then I let go. And I don't ever put my fingers down in here. And my presser foot stayed down that time. It didn't know what I wanted it to do, but normally it would come back up. And here's my bobbin thread, so I've got that. And now let me see. Let me make sure that I'm, I don't have a, yep, we're good. I don't want to have a bunch of excess top thread hanging around. So you see there are a lot of things you have to think about. If you're getting thread nests or you're getting that 1010 error message, Go back and just take everything out and re-thread your machine and go slowly and carefully. And sometimes if you are filling a bobbin and you, you don't follow these arrows and you don't follow the arrow here, if you go the wrong way, your bobbin isn't going to be right. So you have to pay close attention when you are threading your machine when you're winding a bobbin. I never wind my bobbins fast. I think I'm at, um, let's see, <laughs> where am I? I'm at 43. Speed 43, not quite half. And I never ever wind my bobbins fast because uh, going through all these little deals really fast and back here and coming off the spool fast even, uh, bobbin thread for embroidery is quite fine. I use 60 or 70 weight, but I have used 100 weight. And it's very, very fine, and it's polyester, and it, it generates a lot of heat when it's spun around something very fast. The friction causes heat, and your thread will stretch a little bit. And the next thing you know, you're having all kinds of trouble with your 
uh, embroidery project and then you come on the Bernina uh, Facebook groups and you say, gosh, why can't I get one stitch out of my $8,000 machine? Well, it's, it isn't really the machine. It's just that it's a very highly technically designed piece of technology <laughs> and it wants to be good to you. So you have to be good to it. Okay rant over. Um, okay, so I was stitching yesterday, so I'm going to have to switch my presser foot out, and I want to move you down a little bit so you can see better. There we go. And I use the number 15 foot. I like it a lot better. You can. I use my 26 once in a while, but I like the 15 foot. I think I can see better. It means my old eyes. Um, so... Um, you know, <laughs> and if you're, if it doesn't, if you're using a foot that doesn't have a little opening in it for your thread to, to go down through, you just, just put it up over the needle a little bit and there you go. You've got your thread down on the bottom. Okay. There we go. Thread down on the bottom. Now then, this is my first sewing project of the day, so it's reminding me to put my feed dogs down. So let me do that. Me put my feed dogs down. And it's reminding me that I should, once in a while, oil my machine. And I have just done that. And oiling your machine and cleaning your thread cutter when these messages come up, they are on a rotation. So it doesn't mean that you absolutely have to do it right this minute, because like I just did it yesterday so I don't need to do it again today. So here I am, I'm on the embroidery side, and I have my module attached and I have my slide on table on. I always, always use my slide on table unless I need to use my free arm for, for something like a onesie or a sleeve or something like that. I will hoop up and put it on my free arm. So let's see, let's go here because my design is on my USB stick. So here I am up here at my USB stick. Here's my design. And it wants to put it in the maxi hoop, but I don't have a maxi hoop. I have a mega hoop that I'm gonna use. And you see this red line around here. It means it won't fit. So all I have to do is go, this I means information so I'm gonna go look for information here on how to make that fit and right here this little square box in the arrow is your enlarge and reduce button so it's at hundred percent and I want to go down to 97 percent there we are the red line went away and it fits so let's see, do I need to do anything else? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. Okay, let's send it to the machine. You're gonna be doing all this editing and then when you're done editing, all done editing, and you're ready to start stitching, now the machine sees that you've been looking at it, but it doesn't know if you're done. So you have to tell it you're done by touching the needle and the machine says, alrighty, let's dance. It's asking me to allow the machine to move the hoop. Move the arm, sorry, not the hoop, the arm. There is kind of a sequence. Um, if you put your hoop on too soon, you'll be in trouble. So you have to wait until your machine actually asks for and is ready to recognize the hoop. So it just wants to move the arm. So I'm gonna turn you just a little bit and here's the arm of my, my uh, embroidery module. So I'm gonna to touch the little green arrow and the arm is gonna move. Here it comes. Now I have a whole different screen. Look at this screen. It's asking me to please pinch my hoop, put it down and let go. Pinch and put down. So let's do that. Alrighty. 
You might have noticed that I didn't, I didn't do a horizontal line. Since I had my previously embroidered reindeer to use as a template, I didn't really need it. Let me see if I'm close enough here. All right, I think I, I think I'm okay. All righty, here we go. And I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread. I always bring my bobbin thread to the top when I'm doing embroidery. And make sure we're nice and happy here. Okay. And you see on my screen this pink, bright pink highlighted area. That is the entire pine bow. So it's going to stitch that out first and since I only have my machine way down here on slow um, you know this is your speed control if I put it all the way up here I don't know how many minutes it would say I'd have to take a stitch but I don't ever stitch very fast ever and I certainly don't embroider very fast I have never used my little rabbit button you know there's a little rabbit button here supposed to make it go a lot faster but a lot of embroidery designs are governed which means they will only stitch so fast no matter what speed you have your speed control on because they're the machine the hoop has to compensate when it turns a corner and or when it goes around a, a square corner if it's doing lettering it's always speeding up. You'll hear the machine move faster and slower and faster and slower and that's because it knows it cannot go around those corners that fast and make decent stitches. And you'll also notice that some stitches will be shorter going around corners and that's so that it can go around the corners smoothly and not have angled stitches. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's asking me a question. <clears throat> it wants to make sure. Am I sure I have my 26 foot? And am I sure that I have my zero millimeter plate? Yep, I am. But let's go look and just, okay, zero millimeter and it's highlighted, has the white line around it. And let's check out. Okay, I do have the 15 foot, but it won't like that. It wants the 26 foot. So see how the white line disappeared here? You have to have that white line on there. Otherwise that message will keep coming up and keep coming up and keep coming up until you highlight it and close out. And now we should be able to go. And my machine, it, I uh, have it um, set up in my settings that it will stop and let me trim threads. So if your machine goes a little ways and then stops, it's just waiting for you to trim the thread. And it says so here. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this out. And away we go. I'm using black in my bobbin, black thread. It's a 60 weight thread from Invisifil. Um, and there are many, many bobbin threads on the market. You just use whatever you like or what's available. I, I usually have everything sent to me. So, um, especially with COVID, I haven't gone out and shopped very much and I've discovered my favorite online places. <laughs> I just either order online or call them up and say, hey, send me this or send me that. And in a couple days, it's here. And I'm using a 70, 7511 organ needle. It's not an embroidery needle. It's just a regular sewing needle. But you could use an embroidery needle. 
with 7511. That's that's what I'm using. And needles are another thing that will give you grief if you have a burr or maybe your needle wasn't right from the very beginning. Um, you know, when you are having thread nesting or thread shredding or something like that. And I mentioned earlier to completely unthread your machine and rethread everything and make sure your bobbin is wound correctly. Change your needle as well. Needles are not that expensive. I, I might even change my needle each time I stitch this out. If I decide that my stitching, I can hear it. You know, you can hear a lot of things. I'm going to try to move you. I probably won't be able to make this work, but I'll try it. You can hear all kinds of things about your machine. Uh, Melinda Beulah calls it the song of your sewing machine, which I think is really neat because your machine actually does sing to you and you have to remember the tune and the way the, the tune goes <laughs> and if, immediately you'll know if something's wrong because you'll hear it okay this is going to take a while to stitch out so I'm going to uh, go off camera and when the pine bow is done we'll come back and we'll do the we'll do the reindeer there's my pine bow all stitched out absolutely perfectly I never broke a thread. I never had a thread nest. Didn't have any trouble at all. Everything looks great. Um, I have switched, I went ahead and switched to black thread. Um, instead of using black here, I used this blue-green color. But I am using black when I'm doing the reindeer. So I've gone ahead, switched my thread to the black thread and I've pulled up my bobbin thread, got that all done. And so now I'm gonna stitch an outline or a die line for the reindeer. And all it's going to do is just stitch a, just a place where it's gonna show me where to put um, my little reindeers that I have cut out on my scan and cut. My, I lost my footage on when I put this on my, my video so I'm just going to kind of walk you through this there uh, would be a die line here or an outline stitch and when I'm putting on my little reindeer I take the paper backing off the back of the reindeer and then I just set the little guy right in here inside the die lines. And I usually start it, I start with the tail and I make sure that everything is inside the lines. And I just press the tail a little bit and I do a leg and I press the leg down <laughs> and then I do the next leg and I make sure that the back stays nice and straight and since this is fabric I did cut this on the bias you see these plaid stripes going this way rather than straight across and up and down this is on the bias so this will move a little bit and it allows me enough wiggle room to get this right in place 
and press it down. Just press, press, press. And if I need to, I can move the legs a little, move them just a little bit. And I press this in place. And then I take it back to my machine and finish all this outside edging satin stitch. I, I've tried to position the camera so that you can see the screen up here and the embroidery down here. But you can see now that my screen has changed and the, the pine bow has grayed out. It's not highlighted bright pink anymore. Now my reindeer is highlighted in a green color. And you can see that I am on step three of this design. And I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread. And the way I'm doing that is to touch my needle up, down key. Whoops, come on. Come on, baby. And I always use my tweezers. Grab my, my bobbin thread. And I'm not holding these threads very tight. I'm just keeping them from, you know, getting in the way of each other. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stitch around the reindeer. And that's all that's left on this project is uh, to finish up this stitching on this reindeer. It'll go around the reindeer several times. It will go in more than one direction. Sometimes it will go forward, sometimes it will move around and travel to another place and then stitch that spot. So um, when you're stitching out something like this, it's really easy to panic and say, oh my gosh, why did it do that? I'm, it's, it didn't stitch all the way around. Well, it's going to stitch all the way around. Just got to give it time. This is a uh, part of the designing and digitizing process on any kind of embroidery file. Look how close I came. My, my stitches are right on my reindeer. And when I uh, uh, made my SVG file for my cutting machine, I also had to remember to compensate for that two per or three percent reduction because I reduced my design by three percent on my machine, and so I had to reduce my my reindeer so that it would fit in the in the die line on the embroidery. Just a little something to remember. So it, it is really going to secure this down and then the final round that it makes will be a satin stitch. So we'll let this stitch out and in just a few minutes um, back and we'll have our finished triangle with our reindeer embroidery. the little guy all stitched out. Take the stabilizer off the back. Trim up some threads here. Here's the 
the first layer. A little more of this out of here. There we go. And I'm gonna take off the second layer. This is a little bit tricky because remember we do have some bias edges, so we don't want to be stretching too much. So I kind of hold on to the, I get a hold of the actual embroidery and wherever I can and hold on to that and tear my sticky stabilizer off. And I'm not being too rough with this. It, I don't want to pull my threads. So you don't want to pull hard enough to do that. And I don't want to stretch my fabric. So you don't want to pull hard enough to do that. Okay. So now I will probably go in and clean up a little more here with the stabilizer and just... Just tidy it all up and make sure I get this all off of here. But there's my reindeer. And now I will press this and I will press it face down and I'll put a pressing cloth over this because I don't want to wreck this, fat, this thread. So I will press it nice and I'm going to run a row of stay stitching along this edge, which I've done on all of them so that this doesn't stretch clear out and keep it nice. And there's my reindeer. So I hope you've enjoyed this Make It Monday. And I hope that you will uh, enjoy your machine embroidery. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment. Or send me an email, whatever you need to do. Message me on Facebook. And I will be glad to help you. And uh, I did use my yellow bobbin case for this. I forgot to mention that. So I want to be sure and mention that. So everybody have a very, very good week and I will see you next Monday. Bye-bye.